Okay, so in this video, this is my fourth video in the signal transduction pathway series. And here we're going to talk about what happens when a protein in part of that signal transduction pathway is mutated. Or we can also, or and also include uh, what happens if any chemicals are introduced into the pathway as well. So when we look at, for example, the fight or flight response. When we look at how that first messenger or that ligand, epinephrine, brings about a final cell response, um, it really comes down to a series of proteins within inside of the cell uh, working together to complete that like phosphorylation cascade um, and, like, <laughs> and amplify the signal within the cell to bring about that cell response. Now in this case, this is an example of a liver cell where that glycogen will be broken down into individual glucose molecules to make ATP in that fight or flight response. But in reality, I should also mention that epinephrine is a hormone that travels through the entire body, through the blood, through the bloodstream. And uh, depending on the target cell, it will have different cell responses. So not every cell has a receptor for epinephrine, um, and not every cell that receives it will have the same cell response. But what is the same is that intracellularly, so inside the cell, um, this pathway relies on proteins uh, working correctly. So now let's go ahead and see an example. Well, what would happen if that protein receptor, that transmembrane G-linked protein receptor was mutated? Like maybe that region that receives the ligand uh, folded up incorrectly. Because we want to remember that all of these proteins were coded for by genes in our DNA. So our DNA has the directions on how to make proteins. That DNA is copied into RNA. And then the ribosomes read that RNA to build the protein. So if the directions have typos or mutations or mistakes, sometimes that protein doesn't fold correctly. So if there was a mutation in the gene that coded for the extracellular domain of the receptor protein, so here, when I say extracellular domain, that is this region that is outside of the cell. So if there's a mutation in that region, then what's going to happen when that ligand, the epinephrine, goes to attach to its target cells, there is no attachment. The shapes are not compatible. It's not specific anymore. Now, sometimes it might be misfolded. Other times, maybe the mutation was, you know, ex uh, replaced like a nonpolar amino acid with a polar amino acid. And now that ligand is no longer compatible. Maybe the chemical properties no longer match. So now, if no ligand can attach, well, then that G protein won't become active that that GDP molecule will stay. And if you don't have an active G protein, then there's nothing to activate adenylyl cyclase. And if there's no G protein to activate adenylyl cyclase, well, then there's no second messenger. And if there's no second messenger, there's no phosphorylation cascade, and the glycogen does not get broken down, and there's no uh, increase in blood sugar for uh, making ATP in that fight or flight response all because of one mutation in that extracellular domain of that uh, receptor protein. So mutations, uh, while not always bad, can be kind of detrimental when we talk about uh, signaling cascades that rely on uh, like properly formed proteins. Okay, so let's look at another example. So we remember insulin. Insulin is the ligand that will activate a signal transduction pathway that ultimately re, um, results in blood sugar levels decreasing, right? By having that GLUT4 transport vesicle uh, move to the cell membrane and then having uh, protein channels allow for the glucose to diffuse in. But now, sometimes these types of receptors, like these are receptor tyrosine kinases. Now, sometimes you can have mutations on the intracellular portion. So with epinephrine, we saw a mutation in the extracellular region, but you could very easily have a mutation in the genes or the DNA that codes for the intracellular part. Now, this intracellular part of these receptor proteins are critically important for activating the signal transduction pathway within the cell. So if there's a mutation, maybe it's a loss of function mutation, which a loss of function means that it no longer works. 
If there's a loss of function here, then that uh, family of IRS proteins is not going to be activated. They'll still be in the cell. They just won't be activated. And if the IRS proteins uh, are not activated, then the kinase is not activated. And therefore, there's no cell response and the blood sugar remains high all because of a loss of function uh, mutation in that intracellular domain of the receptor protein. You could also, I don't have in my video here, but you could also have a mutation that happens in that transmembrane region that maybe influences how that protein receptor anchors within the cell membrane. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, two, we have two more examples here. So here we have epidermal growth factor and normally uh, the growth factor would attach to the extracellular region of the protein receptor, and that would activate a, a signal transduction pathway. Here we see RAS protein becoming active, and once we have that active RAS, it'll activate uh, the kinase RAF, et cetera, leading to a turning on of gene expression within the cells by activating transcription factors that are needed to turn on the genes for cell division. Okay, so this is uh, the pathway involved are one of the pathways involved when your cells receive a signal to divide and go through mitosis and make more copies. And it's called proliferate. So you start to have like more cells being made. Now, sometimes it can happen where the proteins, uh, protein receptors actually will stay like in their active forms, even without a ligand. So if they are like stuck, like together, like associated together, then that pathway would continually be on and the cell would be continuing to divide even in the absence of a ligand. So that would be bad because now our cells are not listening to messages being sent in our cells uh, or from other cells. And so this would lead to uncontrolled cell growth. Now, sometimes though, it's not only um, mutations in the receptor proteins that we need to worry about. Um, it's very common in about 30% of human cancers, uh, there's actually a mutated RAS protein. So here you can see how the growth factor receptors, the purple things, are not in active form. There's no ligand attaching. So that uh, GRV2 and the SOS proteins, they're not activated. But RAS is. So sometimes RAS can have a mutation that actually causes it to fold up in a way where it stays active. So therefore it's continually activating that intracellular signaling cascade that ultimately turns on gene expression for cells to grow and divide. So when I said that this RAS mutation or this um, mutated RAS protein is responsible for 50, or sorry, 30% of human cancers, um, this is because it leads to uncontrolled cell growth. So the cells are dividing and dividing, forming tumors. And then as those cells spread into other organs, it interferes with the functioning of those organs where now the body can't maintain homeostasis and then the person um, struggles to survive, basically. And so I also, so this is with like a mutated relay protein. And technically, this is the end of my slides. But I also wanted to point out that it's not just mutated proteins that can influence signaling cascades. You also have the idea of different chemicals interacting with any of these component parts. So some of our drug medications uh, that people take, prescription drugs, may influence, uh, li like act as ligands or maybe um, inhibit the attachment of ligands. For example, like you might have like ion channel blockers. So if you remember like uh, ligand gated ion channels, you might have an inhibitor to that type of receptor protein. Um, or maybe there's certain chemicals that will activate proteins on the inside, et cetera. And so um, you could also have things called endocrine disruptors. So an endoc endocrine disruptor would be um, like a chemical in the environment that attaches to the receptor for steroid hormones and turns on gene expression, even though it wasn't the real ligand. It was just a chemical in our environment turning on gene expression, even though it wasn't uh, meant to happen. And so that happens a lot with estrogen. There's a lot of chemicals like pesticides that mimic the shape of estrogen. So they're also nonpolar and they can actually diffuse right through our lipid bilayers and attach to estrogens, uh, protein receptors within the cell, and then turn on gene expression for female genes, even in like males of different species. So anyway, that is my summary, 4.4 uh, for AP Bio on uh, different changes that could happen uh, within 
um, cell signaling pathways and how it can disrupt and alter the cell response. All right, good job.